Hi, I'm Mike Thompson, and this will be my Beginner's Brewer's Blog. This will be a mini-series to highlight just how easy and fun it is to brew your own beverages. This is my second batch, and I made a lot of mistakes on my first. I'm going to highlight my mistakes along the way so that you won't make them uh, when you give it a try. And if you're just starting out and thinking about doing this, join me along the way and let's have some fun. Before I ever begin, I read two books, more than once. The first is this book. It's basically the Bible of brewing from what I understand. It's very thorough and it's full of recipes at the back. And I got this other book at Half Price Books that I prefer actually. It's a quick read, it's full of color illustrations, and uh, it explains most everything. And I've actually read it twice and still enjoy it. So do some reading before you get started and go slow with this. I usually go all in with things, but not this time. My brewing friend that I made the flight paddles for suggested that I make several batches to make sure that I enjoy it. Uh, but I gotta confess, my, my first batch wasn't really all that much fun. It was an experience for sure, but I wouldn't exactly call it fun. It was Brewer's Best, and it was a fantastic kit. It includes all the stuff, even bottle caps. My struggle was with figuring out the instructions, because they're not linear, and reading all the instructions and remembering what to do next while brewing was tough. And then there was issues with uh, transferring things and siphoning. You know what? I'll explain it as I go. Let's get brewing. This second kit's also by Brewer's Best. It's got this recipe sheet. They want me to buy some magazines. Here's the instructions. We'll get to those here in a minute. It's got two separate sheets because this steep to convert insert is instead of a full mash. And I'll explain that as I go. So inside here, let's see. We've got, it's fairly heavy. There's all sorts of stuff. We've got this sock that's gonna hold all the grains while we steep them here in a minute. Here's one bag of grains. This is flaked wheat. Eight ounces, half a pound of that. Here's we got our crushed two row malt. Bottle cap, no, I don't need those today. Those are gonna be for a few weeks from now on bottling day. We've got some hops here. Here's another pack of hops, Liberty. And let's see what else. We've got, oh, here's the dry malt extract. We've got two bags of this, both wheat, yep, spray dried malt. That's dry malt extract, or DME. You might see DME. Uh, here's some yeast. Don't need that just yet. That'll be the last thing today. And then some priming sugar. That's also for bottling day. So I'll put it over there by the bottle caps. Also in here, then I guess last thing is the... Ooh, it, yeah, this is liquid malt extract. My last kit didn't have this. It was just a dry kit. This one has both the liquid, the LME, and the DME. So interesting. Okay and then a spice pack. And what is this? Uh, inspection 20, okay, an inspection certificate. All right then, and that's it. And the tab that broke off. Boy, that's a lot of stuff. Now, you also need this brewmaster kit, and it's pretty much got it all. Inside here, I keep my bottle filling wand, which I don't need that till bottling day, and the tubing that goes with that. So I'll set that aside for now. There was also a lot of other stuff inside this kit, but I store that inside my brew kettle now. I don't store it in here because I don't want to risk scratching these two buckets because scratches harbor bacteria and uh, that can ruin the brew. So I don't store anything in here now. It came with one of these spoons, but I bought an extra. I just need one for today, so I'll, I guess I'll put this one back in here and slide it over there. Now very carefully separate these. I put some paper towels in between them to keep them from touching to minimize scratches. Because you really, you gotta store the buckets inside each other for space, and this keeps it from getting scratched. Hopefully it'll last longer. Inside here, I've got this carboy brush, which I don't have a glass one, so I don't really need this brush. It can be used for other things. I bought this at Walmart because this was a mistake the first time. I didn't strain my junk and brew bags. It came with three of these. Now, none of this, of course, came with this brew pot. This brew pot was purchased separately. It's an eight gallon pot because I didn't have a pot at home big enough. And there's the third brew bag. These are for all your, you know, things. I grow, I don't need that right now. I had to buy this turkey baster separately. I use that to sample my stuff before I actually measure its specific gravity. Uh, PBW wasn't included. I bought that too. That's a industrial cleaner for stuff. The star sand sanitizing solution was included and it's lasted me quite a while. I've got at least enough for one more batch here in this bottle after this. We've got some extra bottle caps from the first kit, spigots, things. There's a stopper down there. 
The spigots, of course, go in the two plastic uh, in the fermenter in the bottling bucket. Stopper for the top of the fermenter. It came with a thermometer, which you need to measure the temperatures of things because it's, it's got to be very accurate. A little bottle brush. Don't need that yet. Uh, here's the airlock that lets the bubbles out as the beer ferments and doesn't let dirty air back in. And then I saved all the papers from the first kit with my beer stats and things on it. So I need to install the two spigots and the two buckets. The O-ring goes in like this with the slanted side in, and now it doesn't sit flat. So you gotta twist it sideways like this while you screw the inside fitting on. Now, I made another mistake here, as you'll see in just a little bit when I did this. So now we gotta prep the sanitizing solution. The bottling bucket, which is the plastic bucket I'm not using, I get to fill with sanitizer and then fill it with full of five gallons of water, or how much ever and you'll see my mistake here momentarily. It doesn't take much of this to do five gallons. And this is a step, you just leave it on there. The instructions are on the side. But my mistake was that the little spigot was actually open and it made a giant mess. And look at this, another mistake. This is my fermenting bucket because it's got the thermometer that I stuck to the side. So I gotta transfer all that to that. And I'll just do that. I need to sanitize my bucket anyway, so this won't hurt. So there we go. The bubbles, uh, the sanitizing solution, the star sand, bubbles up a lot, and the bubbles are sanitizing stuff too, so as soon as the bubbles contact something, it gets clean, and you just let it air dry. So, so everything that I'm going to use later goes in this bucket. The spoon, the strainer, and anything else I'm going to use later today is just going to sit in this bucket till I need it. Now, to steep uh, this stuff, you've got to put it in this little sock in a small pot, because you gotta have enough water to cover these, these two bags of specialty grains. And my other pot's too big and the water's just not deep enough to cover this. So these two bags of specialty grains go in this brew sock that came with the kit. And here's another mistake. You're not supposed to pack the grains in tight, but they naturally kind of pack tight. It, it's a little bit confusing. The first time I did this, I, it took me forever to figure out which grains of stuff actually go in here. And I ended up, as you'll see here in a second, ended up using the last bit of the sock as a hop sock, or a sock hop. And so these two go in. I should have tied it at the very end because you need to keep these loose so that the water can, you know, flow around all the grains. And I, that's a little bit tight. Turns out it, it ended up being fine, but I won't do it this way on batch three. I'll use the entire little sock. I'm going to go ahead and get my big brew pot water boiling because I'm going to do at least three gallons in this pot over here and it's gonna take a long time on the stove. Here's the leftover from that sock. I'm gonna make my own little here to put my hops in. First mistake from the first batch was I just dumped the hops directly into the brew pot and they were a pain to strain out because I didn't have a strainer. So put your hops and little bits inside a mesh bag of some sort so that you just remove the bag when it's done. And you can see there, I don't really quite have enough water but this is extremely temperature critical. The steep to convert has, cannot exceed 155. And you see right there, I've got it pegged at 150, which is in the exact middle of the range that's specified. And you look, it's, it's only a four degree range and you can't go above 155. So I'm gonna split it and go 150 and it takes 45 minutes. So it's, it's gonna take a bit, but gosh, read the instructions thoroughly five times before you start. So you know exactly what's next. This was, 45 minutes of a whole lot of nothing. It was really boring and nerve-wracking to maintain that steady temperature. So I was doing binary with the stove for a while until I got the hang of it and finally uh, realized that low sim was where it needed to be once it came up to temperature. And then I, it just, I pegged it. And you can see there my big pot's starting to boil. It's actually, it's actually shaking. Look at that. Now the liquid malt extract needs to be heated under hot water to make it flow easier and I've got 11 minutes left before I need to add it, so a couple minutes of soaking under hot water will be good. Now, my steep to convert is pretty much done. This is the alternative, it's basically a simple mash is what they call it, and uh, it's not too bad. I'll go ahead and pull that out. I'm gonna let it, it says to let it drip all slowly back in so you, you get all the yummy goodness back into your brew there, and you can rinse it here with a little bit of water to get the last little bit of goodness out of it which I'm gonna do, and done. All right, now the little pot gets poured into the big pot. I'm not quite sure 
Uh, so here it says, yep, you pour the little pot into the big pot. You gotta make sure you do a sufficient boil here, it says. Like I said, these instructions are not linear. So read them extremely carefully five times so you comprehend. Let's move this around. Turn that back on high, because I'm gonna, I want this on the front burner so I can reach it. And then I'll move that over to there. Ooh, that was hot, look at that. Okay, and dump little pot into big pot. And then wait till it comes back up to a boil. Because the this was only at 150 degrees. So it's gotta come up another 70 before it begins to boil. So it'll be a bit. This is why, you know, a nice outdoor propane burner, something would be kind of nice. Time for liquid malt extract. And it's well as you can see here, it's still not super runny. Now, this is another mistake I'm currently making. I'm adding it too fast, and you'll see here later that it caramelizes on the bottom of the really hot pot. So as you're dumping, you gotta stir. I, as you see, I had to get my spoon, it wasn't handy, and I poured it in way too fast. I should pour slower and stir quicker to keep this moving because some of it sunk right to the bottom and you'll see that I have nice spiral caramelized uh, sugars there on the bottom right where the burners are. I guess I suppose I could have got it a little bit, uh, little bit hotter too to make it easier to pour, but it's super sticky. Actually tastes pretty good. There, so yeah, get it all out of there. But I, I gotta keep stirring, and I'm not stirring right now, if you notice. So be extra careful when you add your dry extract and your liquids. You gotta keep it from getting near the bottom of the hot pot because it will, it's, even the dry extract, as you'll see in a minute, it's super, super sticky the second it gets uh, wet. It's like Fun Dip or any other powdered candy. But I wanna get it all out of there if I can. I assume this recipe is precise, and I would like to be as precise as possible. There we go. But I should have had a, another hand to stir if I had had one available. But my uh, second hand, I think, was over at his Nana's house at the moment. But he'll be back later for help. So to continue, I, I can actually feel it on the bottom. It kinda, eh. So, still going. But now, that's all done, and now we're actually starting to boil. And once we get there, then we'll go to step four and continue. And then follow this brew day schedule, which is this box down here in the bottom right. Nope, yep, right there. But like I said, it's not linear, so read everything and the footnotes and sidebars. Now here's those hops. These are hop pellets. They're not whole hops. They're, you know, they're like those uh, pellets that you'd use in one of those pellet style grills. But I'm gonna put them in this little bag or this little sock, my sock hop. And that way, all I have to do is take this bag out later instead of trying to fish out all the little hot bits. Because, oh my God, it was awful the first time when I just poured them in directly. And the instructions didn't specify either. So we've got a good boil going. I'm gonna turn it down a little bit to seven, even though this burner doesn't go up to 11. But anyway, but you don't want this stuff to boil over because as you see, it gets really foamy. I start my time at zero. I'm not actually writing the time down because I'm using the timer on the oven. So now I'm just gonna boil 40 minutes. And it's incredibly boring. See, even sped up, it's not interesting. Nothing's happening. The hops are bouncing around and it's all turning bitter. Now, you can see the condensation there up on the cabinets from all the steam. So I put a fan next to this to blow the steam away from the cabinets. I use one of the bags here from the kit to put this little spice pack in because like I said first time I dumped the spices indirectly and made an absolute mess uh, plugging up my siphon and things so oh turn the fan off before you add this because it blows everywhere if you don't and stir quickly so it doesn't caramelize on the bottom or get in you know clumps and here's my Liberty hops that are going at the end these are the flavor hops because they're going in near here the end also in a bag because I'm never again dumping anything directly in unless it's an extract. And isn't that pretty? Not really, but it is in its own sort of gross way. All right, well, that's that. Boiling's done, time to chill it. I had to get 20 pounds of ice from the store and fill up my sink here to chill it because it's simple and remove all this junk here before it gets too cold. Once it gets cold, it has to remain sterile. So 
Once it's, once it's, you know, boiling temperature, everything's still fine. It's killing off any sort of germs and whatnot. But as soon as you chill it, it's got to remain... Ah, oh, there's my second hand. He's going to help me stir. I didn't have enough ice the first time because uh, I only used what I had in the fridge, and it was only about 10 pounds worth in the ice tray. So I bought this 20-pound bag at the grocery store and floating this tin here inside the... floating my pot in the sink measuring the temperature very carefully with a sanitized thermometer. And Alex wanted to play with the auto siphon. You must have one of these. I did not have one the first batch and the siphon thing was a nightmare. And here we go. And this strainer too. As you'll see here, we'll get some bits that are, you know, true for you actual people, but the gunk at the bottom of the pot, you want to strain that out. And that's pretty much it, we're about done. Oh, did we get it? Look at all that junk in the strainer. Some of that's caramelized uh, LME from the bottom. You can see there, look at that nice pattern on the bottom of my pot. See those black marks? That was, yeah, those black marks were solid caramel. And I need to add some water now to hopefully bring it up to five gallons. But I need to check my original gravity here with my hydrometer. Use my bulb to grip it. Make sure that it's only good at a certain temperature. It's calibrated at a certain temperature, and so you'll have to convert. But you can see here that my original gravity is not quite there. So I need to dilute it a little more, add a little more water. Eh, not quite five gallons, but... And now, a moment of science! The hygrometer measures moisture in the air. That's not what we want. The hydrometer, with a D, that came with this kit, is what we use to measure the relative density of a fluid. Relative to what? Water. This little thing is calibrated to float at a specific depth, depending on the density of the fluid. Water is said to have a specific density of 1. Its density is typically taken as 1 gram per cubic centimeter, and that approximation is good enough for most things. So when brewing, you're dissolving sugars and things from the grains into the water. Remember that salt water is denser than fresh water, and things float higher in salt water? When you scuba in fresh water, you have to carry less weight, right, because of the decreased buoyant force of the water? Well, all of our dissolved sugars increase the density of our water. We want to measure this, and that's our original gravity reading. We also have to do it at the correct temperature as specified on the hydrometer, or apply a conversion. So as the wort begins to ferment, the sugar is converted to alcohol. And alcohol isn't as dense as water, so the density of the beer drops. Measure it in intervals, and the fermentation has stopped when the gravity uh, reading stabilizes. There are three scales on this hydrometer. And we want the one here that has a graduation every two thousandths. You can see that it's got a one here and a 1.1 here. And each small graduation is two thousandths. It's very accurate. But it needs to be done at the calibrated temperature here. Or you can Google a converter and plug in your reading and temperature. That's what I do. Getting a temperature right on five gallons of liquid is hard. Converting a number is not. Each beer recipe has a target initial gravity and a target final gravity. By knowing these two numbers, you can then calculate the percent alcohol by volume. Boom. And that's it. One, one, four, six. You can see here I'm in range. It was supposed to be 045 to 049. I'm at 046. So I'm in the ballpark. And now sprinkle the yeast on top to begin fermenting. Like so. And then clean up. Huge mess. Water and stuff and sanitizer pretty much went everywhere, thanks to Mr. Auto Siphon. And put the cap on, the little stopper, and the airlock. Fill the airlock halfway, oops. Fill the airlock halfway with sanitizing solution, just so that anything to get, you know, whatever. The point of this is to let the gas bubbles from the fermenting out, but not let the contaminated air in. So, it's a really neat little invention. Then I'm going to put it in an out-of-the-way corner for a couple weeks and let it ferment and cover it up to keep the light off of it. And that's it. Go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already. I'm Mike Thompson, and thanks for watching. I really appreciate it.